Whoa, earthquake, earthquake, keep rolling. Where, where do we go? Should we get outside? Welcome to FTFHQ. Today we're gonna to be doing an office tour slash what's in my bag and walking you through every piece of gear I own and why I'd recommend buying it. Now, before we get started, I always wanna say, I started out eight years ago accumulating gear, started with a Canon T2i and a PVC pipe DIY slider. So I don't wanna hear that I inherited this from my dad. I worked for this and now we're gonna walk through and show you what we've accumulated and what we have here in the office slash studio. But before we get started, big thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Storyblocks video is a great service for when you're in need of a quick video clip for B-roll or an After Effects template or a motion background. And the thing that I personally love and use most on Storyblocks video are their title animation After Effects presets. To quickly up the production value of one of your edits, I'll often use one of their title animation presets like the one you saw at the beginning of this video to give your edit a much more professional feel with minimal time time and effort. I highly recommend looking into Storyblocks video to up the production value of your videos and you can do so by clicking on the link in the description below or go to storyblocks.com slash Parker to learn more about Storyblocks video. But let's now dive into our office tour. Now, first of all, I just wanna tell you guys, we started building this about a year and a half ago and it just wrapped up getting finished about five months ago. And we're finally to a point where I feel like we can function out of this place. So excited to be in here, have a lot more space. I used to be in my basement before this. And before that, I was in a smaller office space. And before that, in my bedroom. So again, a lot of progression has happened over the years to lead up to getting my own office space. So now, first of all, this is a big IKEA armoire. It's a store, a bunch of our knickknacks and gear and whatnot. So let's talk first about lenses over here. One of the zoom lenses you're seeing right now is a 16 to 35 Canon that is on this camera. And one of them's in the shop, actually 24 to 70, because I dropped it and broke it. And then one of them is over there, we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, for the most part here, we have our prime lenses. So you have our Sigma 85, Sigma 35. These are both 35s, one's Landon's, a Sigma 20, a Sigma 18 to 35, that's a zoom lens, and then the macro 100 Canon lens. And then right here we have a Liowa 12 millimeter that we use for super wide stuff like real estate on our crop sensor 1.35 1DX. Oh, do not forget about this guy. This is the Liowa 24 millimeter probe lens. This thing is insane, the types of shots you can get. Uh, down here we got our Phone stabilizers, this is the top phone stabilizer I recommend. This is the Movi stabilizer, and you see we have some counterweights on this one. That's for when I'm using um, external lenses, which we'll show you in a second, but definitely that is my favorite phone stabilizer. Now, second place I would give to the DJI Osmo Mobile. I believe this is version three. By the way, I'm gonna be linking to all these in the description so you can see where to buy any of these. This one's also good. It's gonna be two to three times cheaper than your Movi, but personally, I just think Movi's gimbals are better. Here we have all of our filters. I'm a big polarizer guy, I like polarizers. I also recently picked up the Peter McKinnon variable ND filter, which is awesome. I like it except for the fact that it has a little bit of a green tint on there, but other than that, it's super versatile, super awesome filter. These are all by Polar Pro, by the way. Polar Pro is the company I love and use for all my filters. Here we have a bunch of knickknacks. Here's my Moment lenses, love my Moment lenses. Here we got ND filters for drones. Again, this is from Polar Pro. ND filters for your phone, actually. You haven't used those a ton. A toothbrush for brushing your teeth. A bunch of batteries, just little knickknacks. You find out when you do filmmaking, there's lots of little gadgets and connectors and adapters you need for filmmaking. Again, more knickknacks, trinkets, cables. And then we get less and less organized as we come down here. That's it for this side. Coming over here, we got uh, four different cases of uh, lavalier mics. This is the one I love and use the most. It's the Sennheiser G4. It's what you're listening to right now. And uh, we have one of those. Then we have some G3, some of the older versions. Right here is my Rode NT1, um, a great podcasting microphone. It used to be my main microphone, but now I've moved on to SM7Bs, which we'll talk about in a second. Here are all of my monitors. You guys saw that I did recently a monitor review on Desviews, Andy Cines, Small HDs, Automos. These are all the different monitors we own. On-camera road mics you see here. Got like four or five of those. These are the Zoom H6s for recording audio too. So all the audio gear sits here. Uh, coming down here, more tools. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Up here you guys see we have stabilizers. That's the Movi M5. 
That's the Crane 3, and what's being filmed on right here is the Ronin S, Ronin S being our most used of the three. But I actually like the Movi M5 better than the Ronin S as far as uh, stabilization. Again, I think FreeFly just has better gimbals overall than any other company. But that thing's a lot bigger and clunkier to carry around and doesn't have a stand to sit it on. So we just end up not using it as much because this is easier to use. And that's something to keep in mind, guys, that when you're buying gear, don't just consider what's best. Consider what would I actually use and is most practical and easiest to use on the go. Because if you don't end up using it, it doesn't matter how nice it is, you're not going to ever use it. So factor that in as well the glide cams. This is kind of a progression of glide cams. You have the Devon Graham series with the Devon Graham head over here on the HD 4000 body with the HD 4000 head over here because I like the Devon Graham head better, but I like the gimbal better on the 4000 series. And then they made this guy, which is the HD Pro, which is a good combination of both. So if you guys are going to get a glide cam, this is what I recommend, the glide cam HD Pro. As far as sliders go, uh, you guys know I use Rhino sliders. And the main times we use the slider is for product shoots. We'll cut to some B-roll times we use that. These guys are tube lights. I actually do use these a lot. Love these bolts and lights. We'll link to those in the description as well. Let's move on to, uh, let me show you this guy. This is a barn door, sliding barn door. This was custom made out of wood. This is a plant from Home Goods, And this is a Carter. So Carter is, um, hey he's actually one of my oldest buddies. We uh, went on a mission together Not and one of the, the oldest and, and the only friend I have. We were mission buddies back in Uruguay about 10 years ago. We came back and we worked together at Devon Supertramp and he is now, as of a few months ago, working for us. So it's assistant to, assistant to the, manager. the manager. So that's Carter. Here's his setup. We got uh, his AirPods. Yep. Let's get, that's, that's cluttered. That's really not looking good. Okay. Yeah, we got here the newest 16 inch MacBook Pro. How have you liked it? New escape button. <laughs> <laughs> escape button. <laughs> um, and this is the LG 38 inch wide curved monitor. I love this thing. It's super awesome. How have you liked it? Uh, it's a little big. But? But I like it. <laughs> but he likes it. He doesn't have to like it, but I like it. Well, what the problem is, the monitor's great. The desk is small. That's the problem. What kind of desk we got here? This is an Artifox desk. Super good looking. Be aware it is a little bit small. We didn't know the exact dimensions. We probably should have researched that, but it is probably their best looking desk for sure. We bought a bunch of these chairs. These are like $200, <laughs> that is a beautiful model. Great lumbar support. These are actually chiropractor recommended. I have a chiropractor. We'll show you some clips of me getting adjusted. <laughs> Those are satisfying sounds right there. And uh, right here we got a new light I just picked up. This is a 28 inch Falcon Eyes light. This is basically a big diffused light that uh, has a really slim profile if you're short on space, like situations like this where you're up against a wall and you don't have a ton of depth to put a big dome on there. It's not quite as big as what you'll see in a minute, our aperture dome lights. So it's not going to be as soft, but it's 28 inches, still pretty soft. A great addition to our family here. Here on the wall, you'll see more of these. These are acoustic panels by Geek Acoustic, I believe. Kind of expensive, but they're going to be better than acoustic foam and they obviously look a lot better. Acoustics in this room aren't perfect. So up here you have uh, acoustic panels hanging from the ceiling. Let's come over here now to our gear shelf. This is the Tilta shoulder rig. Here we got our drones, the Phantom 4 Pro. You have the Mavic 2 Pro. Over here we got the Red Dragon, our most expensive prop in the office. Never shot on it, but it looks really nice. I thought it'd be worth getting. Just kidding, we do use it, but not as much as our Canon cameras because it is a lot bigger, bulkier, heavier, worse battery life, no autofocus, things like that. On that is the Canon 70 to 200. Over here, we got the Black Magic 6K pocket camera. We honestly haven't used this since we did a review on it. Just not our cup of tea for the type of stuff we shoot. Great camera, but terrible battery life and other things that make it not super usable. This is the first camera that I ever owned. $200 Canon T3i used. 6D Mark II, haven't used that much since we got the EOS R. So if you're picking between those two, I'd get the EOS R. Has its limitations. As you know, we did a comparison of this against the 5D Mark IV. Go check that out. But what I do love is this 28 to 70 beast of a lens, 2.8 aperture fixed on that. So. I mean, it is massive, as you can see there in comparison to that camera. Here we got the 1DX Mark II. We got several of these. Um, both of these camera angles are 
1DX Mark IIs, and we'll talk about it in a second, but we have a 1DX Mark III over in the next room. So down here, coming to our battery charging station, tried to make this as clean as possible, hard to keep it clean when you have to charge 20 things at a time. Right here, you have a rotating black platform thing here. This we use for product shoots. We'll cut to some footage of times we've used that. And we also have a white one over here that we'll show you, but uh, those are super nice. And then here, just Pelican cases and different cases to haul this gear off when needed. So yeah, that's kind of the, the gear rack there. All right, coming over here to this side of the A5, this is our product shooting area. See here we got a Manfrotto tripod, we got another tube light here, we got a jib for doing some overhead stuff. Dakota's doing a comparison of the cheapest microphones he could find. Don't get these snowballs, these suck. You want to get on the cheap end are the Blue Yetis, love those, and then some other options here. This guy right here is the Rode NTG. We'll put it up on the screen. Anyway, this is one of the best mics for the price that I've seen, super versatile. Here we got our, our lights. This is the Aperture 300D with the light dome. These are my favorite key lights for that nice soft look. And back here, another Aperture 300D. And then back here we got these acoustic panels, which what I do here, Wherever I'm filming, I'll just grab a few of these, surround myself with them, and that just cuts down the amount of reverb. So when I come to sit down here, my audio is more contained and not reflecting off of walls. Here we have a nice little setup in this corner. The goal with building this office space was to have a bunch of different setups, places to film. Carter's desk is a place to film. We have this product corner to film. And then right here, I've done some Facebook Lives. So it's, it's just nice having different setups in different areas so that multiple people can be filming at a time in different areas and different looks, just kind of mixing it up so you don't get bored of the same look over and over. Here we just have a regular iMac. This is actually the first iMac that I got probably five years ago. Since then, we've upgraded to more computers that we'll show you in a minute. This guy right here is actually the Mark II of the 300D. And if you're going to get the 300D, definitely get the Mark II because as Lannan's footage is going to show, you got this all-in-one guy here instead of two separate boxes, and it's a lot less loud. You had huge noisy fans on the original one, so they've made the Mark IIs a lot better, so I highly recommend getting the 300D Mark IIs if you do look into those. Right here we got ourselves what is currently my go-to shotgun mic, the Rode NTG5. Love that guy. Um, here on a boom pole, on a C-stand, XLR cables. Highly recommend Mogami as a quality brand gonna last you a long time super high quality sound now you might be saying but Parker why do you just have a big blank wall right here it's just a white wall what's the purpose of that well I'm glad you asked get some uh, close-up tight cinematic stuff of me doing this <laughs> We're gonna start using this space to do live in-person trainings, invite 20 to 30 people here in our office at a time and train them in person. And then obviously have presentations up here where we're teaching a large group of people. Now, the problem with putting a projector in this space is we have a huge open concept. And so in order to mount a projector, we'd have to extend it down like 10 feet and then we'd have this dangling projector out in the middle of nowhere. And so it wasn't a very good option. We also thought about doing like nine TVs, but that gets super expensive, like 20, 30 grand to get a multi-TV setup like that. And then we came across something called the LG Cinebeam 4K laser projector. So the way a short throw projector works is it only has to be a few inches from the wall, seven inches exact to project a 120 inch image. We're actually going a little bit beyond that. Ours is about a foot from the wall wall which gives us 150 inches, which is bigger than they recommend, but we're in a huge space where people are gonna be sitting really far back, so we wanted to make it a little bit bigger. But the point is, we can have this projecting, and I can walk in front of it without it ruining the projection. So this was the best solution for us for what we plan on using it for. Now, some other reasons that we got this projector in particular is it's a 4K projector, and apparently it's the only 4K projector that can stream 4K Netflix content, but it also has a two million to one contrast ratio, which makes the image pop off the screen compared to a much flatter looking image that you'd get from a conventional projector. And it has DCI P3 97% color accuracy with HDR10, which again, gives you a lot more vibrant 
vibrance in the colors, and not only are the colors more vibrant, they're more accurate as well, allowing you to see the colors as we saw them in real life when capturing this footage. And the HDR10 also gives you better dynamic range so that you can see more detail in the shadows. So naturally those specs were a must for our studio. And in order to be able to darken the room like you just saw, we installed this awesome system here that allows me with these automatic shades that we installed to bring up all the lights in the house. Or if you don't want direct sunlight, let's say it's super sunny, we can only select diffusion and that brings down just white diffusers. So we still get light coming in, but it's a super soft diffused light. So that is studio one. Now moving on to studio number two. This is a smaller space. Um, I thought about walling this off to make another office space, but I decided to keep it open so we have room to kind of put gear in here. Oh, whoa, earthquake, earthquake, keep rolling. Where, where do we go? Away from the walls or anything. Well, you need to go Should we get outside? No, you're not supposed to go outside. Don't go outside. No, it's the best place. No, they say not to go outside. What? <laughs> This is why you don't go outside because the, the stuff out on your building is what's going to fall. Yeah, first. but if I go in the middle of the... While it's shaking, Parker. There's no... Okay, earthquake tip. We just had an earthquake while we were filming. You're supposed to go outside in the middle of a field. Carter doesn't know. He's assistant to the manager. All right, anyway, back to Studio 2. That was our second earthquake today, by the way. The world is ending. Coronavirus, earthquakes, ammonia leaks at Kennecott Copper Mine. Moroni's trumpet fell off. Visit coming to Christ to learn more about your salvation. So this is where we do, come over here. Again, wood wall, that was about $1,200 to have that custom made. I'll link to the guy who made it, awesome work. He's local in Utah. So you guys have seen a lot of tutorials done here. Um, we got two SM7B mics that, uh, these are my favorite mics. Super high quality sound, probably the most popular for podcasting out there. Have two of them, when we have two people, when we have three people, we just have a third mic out of camera like that. That is the Rode NTG3. The Aperture 120D, this is one of my favorite lights as well. I actually like these better than the 300Ds because they're just less bulky. They're less powerful, but I don't need as much power for what I'm doing, so um, they work just great. Here we have another tube light. This just kind of gives me a little fill light up here, a little catch light in the eye. So I like having that on. In fact, let's turn all this on real quick. We'll turn on this light. Right here we have a Lightstorm Mini 20D for our back hair light. Bring that down on the C-stand, prop it back up, and that's our hair light. Back here we have two tube lights that kind of light up the back wall. And then I plop myself right there, bring in the mic, and we begin filming. So that's uh, the basics of how this is set up. Moving over here to this desk, this is my iMac Pro. This is an uplift desk once again. This is just a regular LG second monitor here. But here we have Tanner and Dakota's office space. This is nicely acoustically treated. If you haven't seen it, check out our video that shows you in depth um, how we acoustically treated this room, the steps we went through. This is Tanner Townsend's desk. He's using another one of my iMac. He has some Yamaha speakers here. But yeah, and then over here we got Dakota set up. He has a 450 inch Samsung. Yeah, it's like uh, 50, it's, it's a giant curvy screen. Um, I don't know why you need a screen that big, but Dakota needs it. And so there it is. He also has an iMac Pro G-Tech Drive Tower. He actually built this desk himself, so don't ask me where he got it, so he'll have to come build it for you. All right, moving on now to my office. This is where my domain is located. In here, we have some acoustic phone up here, some nice uh, bass traps in the corner, and then here we have the Geek Acoustic panels again, and uh, here we have the Mac Pro. Honestly, guys, comparing to the iMac Pro, just not much of a difference. Go check out that comparison. I think it was like 25% faster in some categories and same in other categories. Again, here we have my nice lumbar supported chair. Um, this guy is our 6K Apple display. I haven't talked about this yet. Still getting a feel for what I think about it, but so far I'm not super impressed. For six grand, it's kind of like, eh. I had before this a LG 65 inch OLED display, and I honestly think I liked that better. For the price, I mean, it's gonna be a third of the price for an LG OLED TV. The color accuracy is awesome, and that's great for color correcting and whatnot. So yeah, some people may have reasons why they would consider it worth it. Coming to my monitors here, my speakers, these guys I just upgraded from the Rocket KRK 
8s, I believe is what I had before. One of them went out after about two years of use. You know, they're cheaper and that's going to happen, not going to last as long. So I was asking Brendan, by the way, what he recommended, and he recommended I get these guys, I'll link them. So they were almost 10 times more expensive than my previous ones. You may ask, is it worth it for 10 times more money? Honestly, the sound coming out of these things, the way I could describe it, it's like if you're colorblind and you see color for the first time. When I listened to this, it was like hearing color for the first time. Here we got the Aperture 120D version 2. Again, highly recommend version 2s over version 1s of Aperture's lights. Let me just bring my blinds down over here <laughs> and we'll turn on all of our lights. And I haven't used this setup for a video yet, but I just barely got everything situated. Over here, you got the LS Mini 20C. And then you see on here, I have a nice little gel, that light blue back there. Back here, we got another Mini 20 that gives me the hair light. And then back here, you can see I have a Philips Hue strip that allows me to, from my phone, control the light color. And it changes the color in my off five. What else we got in here? Oh, uplift desk, this whole thing raises up. Don't need to show you that, you know how those work. G drive down here, 112 terabyte G drive. If we're gonna talk about what's in my bag, we better show you my actual bag. Um, nothing's changed here from the past years. I use an ape case, has wheels on the bottom so that when I'm on the road, oh yeah. And then last but not least, here we have Actually, I didn't talk about my other tripod. That tripod in the next room over is uh, my favorite tripod. It just allows you to lift up the legs all at once. Super fluid head and super light, uh, but it is super expensive, probably two grand. This one's a Manfrotto. Don't like it as much. The legs are a little bit jankier, it's a little bit heavier, but it's about a third the price. Still an awesome tripod. On here, we have the Pad Prompter Pro, which I use to read scripts when I'm doing tutorials. On here, we have a 24 millimeter Sigma. So that is the 1DX Mark III. Haven't used it a ton yet, but what I have used it for, Definitely a great upgrade from the Mark II. And then up here we have the small HD 7 inch. Did a full video on that. I think that's pretty much it for our setup. That's uh, the office tour. So there you have it guys, that is the Office Tour 2020. Again, every year we've made a lot of progress in the types of gear we have, the types of gear we own. And uh, so it's been a work in progress. It's been a lot of hard work. Uh, we now have uh, seven or eight employees. And so, you know, full-time filmmaker and Park Wallet Productions, they continue to grow and we continue to bring on talented guys and continue to get new gear. A lot of work, guys. It takes work, but it's worth it. It pays off. Don't forget to check out Full-Time Filmmaker, the ultimate online film course, where we have over 300 videos just like this walking you in depth of how to film and edit professional videos. And we also have a longer version of this video in the course. This was a more condensed version for you know putting it on YouTube in smaller format. I'll link in the description to all the gear you saw here today. And if you guys have any further questions for me, please let me know.